listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bumbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jeb's a millionaire. The Ken folks said, Jeb, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is. Swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. Come on up to Mr. Drysdale's office and say howdy to the folks. Oh, yes, sir. Reckon it's all right to leave the truck parked here? Oh, yes, sir. We got a whole stack of parking tickets. <laughs> no, you. Them Beverly Hills policemen sure are generous. That's a fact. Seems like every time we park here, they give us another ticket. I reckon they want to keep us coming back. How many you got? Well, it must be a dozen. Looky here. Here's a $2 one. <laughs> this one's for four. Here's a $5 one. We got a whole stack of these. $10. Fifteen dollars? You know, Jethro, we ought to share our good fortune with other folks. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what you do. See them bunch of cars parked up yonder? Oh, yes, sir. I want you to take them tickets and put one on every car. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll put it under the windshield wiper so the wind won't blow them away. Just below, and then uh, meet me up in Mr. Drysdale's office. Well, Uncle Ted, I hadn't we ought to stick around so as they'll know who gave them the tickets? <laughs> no, Jethro, the joy is in the giving. Not being thanked for it. <laughs> you know, Chief, there's, there's something quite humorous about Jed Clavett owning the most exclusive dress shop in Beverly Hills. Mm. <laughs> exclusive and expensive. I had to buy the house for Renee in order to acquire this business frontage for him. It's a great investment. The first of many that I'll be making for Mr. Clavett. He is indeed fortunate to have you piloting a ship of finance into the harbor of security. Harbor of security? Well, that's rather a well-turned phrase. Thank you, Chief. And standing at the mouth of that harbor, like a welcoming beacon, is the Commerce Bank of Beverly Hills. A West Coast Statue of Liberty. Exactly. Oh, by George, I have an idea. On our new bank building, let's have the same words engraved that are on the Statue of Liberty. Wonderful. Bring me your poor, your heart. What? Wait, wait a minute. Is that what it says, bring me your poor? Yes. Well, forget it. <laughs> forget it. How do they? Bring me your rich, your Clampets. <laughs> Pardon? Congratulations, Mr. Clampett. You are now the owner of one of the choicest business properties in Beverly Hills. I am? Yes, I bought it for you. Well, uh, how much did it cost? No, a mere half million dollars. Mr. Drysdale, that's too expensive a present. <laughs> no, no, I bought it for you with your money. Oh. It's an investment for you, Mr. Clabbit, a, a tax shelter. For example, there's a very fine dress shop which you now own. And the second story is occupied by several doctor's offices, of which you are now the landlord. It's the kind of property that has tax advantages. You can depreciate it. Oh, I do, I do. <laughs> I mean, you can depreciate the value of the building. You take my word, Mr. Drysdale, I appreciate everything you do for me. <laughs> Uh, would you mind stepping over here, Mr. Clampett, and sign these papers? You have your notary seal? Indeed I have. Right here, Chief. You sign right over here, Mr. Clampett. Right this line here. Howdy. Hello, Jethro. Oh, Jethro, you, you dear, sweet, handsome lad. What a, what a pleasant surprise. Miss Jean, I reckon it was Jethro coming in sudden like that to have done it, but you just crimped that piece of paper all out of shape with them fancy pliers. <laughs> I guess I did squeeze a bit harder than usual. Jethro, would you like to sign as a witness? Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Drysdale, I didn't see her do it. No, no, I meant witness your uncle's signature. Sign this copy, too, Mr. Clavett. Your Uncle Chad is now what the government officially designates as a small businessman. He's big as me. If I can eat a turnip off of your head. <laughs> Ready, Miss Hathaway. Oh, yes. <laughs> Jethro, I reckon you and me better go on home. You just caused Miss Jane to ruin another piece of paper. You bought a store in Beverly Hills? 
Well, uh, strictly speaking, uh, Mr. Drysdale done the buying, but we own it. What kind of a store is it? Well, it's a dress store. What in tarnation would want with that? First off, it'll uh, give us all something to keep us busy. And then uh, I thought that uh, Ellie working around a dress store, she might get interested in wearing dresses and acting more like a lady. Ellie is a lady. She don't need no dress store. Hey, Uncle Jed, please don't send me out to fetch Ellie no more. Bella can get killed. What happened? <laughs> well, Ellie and her ape and her bobcat were sitting up in the top of this elm tree. So I climbed up to tell her to put on some shoes that we was going to town. Well, I got thrown 20 feet to the ground, jumped on, scratched, choked, pounded, and pretty near done in all together. Well, an ape and a bobcat are pretty good fighters. Yeah, well, that's why I was so mad. They just sit there in the elm tree and watch her whoop me. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> what do you think, Granny? Well, I think we better get her washed up and down to the dress store. <laughs> do down to the dress door, Pa? Well, I figure first we'll all just look around and see what needs to be done. Then we'll pitch in and help wherever we can. When Ma done her dressmaking, I used to oil the sewing machine. So did pedal easy. Well, you offered to do that, Jethro. Tell me, May, can shake out flour sacks and bead sacks and undo the seams so I can wash and iron it and make yard goods. <laughs> well, now, Granny, this being a fancy Beverly Hills dress store, they probably got ready-made yard goods. It's hard to beat good stout feed sacks for house dresses <laughs> if they ain't got too much filler in them. This don't sound like much fun to me. Jethro, pull over to the curb. I'm gonna jump out and go back home. Now, young lady, you sit right where you are. You ain't gonna feel much like sitting. Jethro, you drive on down to our dress store. Yes, sir, Uncle Jeff. This is as close as I can get, Uncle Jeff. Streets parked full of cars. Looks like somebody's doing a good business. I hope it's our dress store. Pa, I don't want to work in no dress store. Now stop complaining, Ellie. Jethro, you sure we come to the right place? Yes, sir. This here is the address that was on those papers you signed. This here is somebody's house. <laughs> house Arini. You're right. Well, let's go. Yes, sir. That's a good deal like the name of the lady that uh, Miss Jane said was running a dress store. If this is a dress store, I'll eat a yard of calico. <laughs> hey, Ma done her dress making in the back room of the house. Maybe this here Arini woman does that, too. Wouldn't do no harm to ask. Well, I'll see y'all back home. Now, wait, Ellie Mae. It was on account of you I went along with buying this place. Now, you're going inside with us, and you're going to behave like a lady. Hey, in there. Anybody home? <laughs> Howdy there. Is this here Renee's dress store? This is the house of Renee. That's the name. Are you her, Remy? No, indeed. Madame Renee is in the fitting room in the rear. I was right, just like Ma used to do her dressmaking. Well, this sure is a pretty part. <laughs> here, here, here. Oh, thank you. Go easy, Granny. Looks like that gassed up cider city folks is so fond of. <laughs> Renee? Renee, come quickly. What is it, Mrs. Langwell? Who are these people? They look like welfare cases. <laughs> you go on up and have your fitting. Maurice and I'll deal with these trespassers. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Oh, uh, we's Clampets, ma'am. Uh, I'm Jed, uh, Granny, Jethro, Ellie Mae. Uh, Maurice. Show these people the door. Oh, no need to put him to that trouble, ma'am. We've seen it when we come in. <laughs> I don't blame you for being proud of it. It's pretty. <laughs> the whole place is pretty, Reeny. But you ought to dump this cider. It's done turned on you. <laughs> well, what do you want? Why are you here? Oh, pitch in and help any way we can. Yeah, shake out feet sacks, undo the seams, and wash and iron and stitch them together. Oil the sewing machines and sweep up thread and stuff. I can do most any kind of carpentry work and uh, heavy tooting. Oh, I see you're looking for employment. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but I have no work of an unskilled nature. Uh, if you'll excuse me just a moment. 
You wish me to telephone the police? Oh, no. Above all, we must avoid a scene or any kind of notoriety. Just give them some coins and send them away. I'm afraid we have no silver, madame. Oh, dear. Don't they make some rather small paper money for such emergencies? <laughs> as small as one dollar. Really? Do we have any? I hardly think so. Oh, I'm afraid they might become unpleasant if we send them away with nothing. I have it. The coffee machine in the back. That may have some coins in it. Go and see. Would you be safe? Oh, yes. They're obviously gentle people. Just poor. <laughs> Maurice has gone to see if he can find some money. We hardly ever have any cash. Uh, young'uns, uh, you wait out front. I'm sorry business has been so bad, ma'am. Oh, no wonder. There ain't as much as a yard of goods or a spool of thread or a card of buttons for folks to buy. Well, now, Granny, it takes money to lay in a stock, and she just told us she didn't have none. Don't you worry, honey. Good times are on their way. Jed here just bought the whole building. <laughs> yes, that's, that's, that's wonderful. Oh, shucks, it wasn't nothing. He's got 40 million. Yes, 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 of course. Yeah, now, if there's anything you need, I hope you speak up. Oh, I shall. Uh, I shall. <laughs> Madame Rene, I'm afraid this is all we were able to scrape together. Seven dimes and two nickels. Oh, I'm embarrassed to say this is all we have, but I want you to take it and buy some food. <laughs> How much is it, Jim? Only 80 cents. Well, now, don't you be embarrassed, ma'am. You can buy a lot of food for that. Anything special you'd like us to get? So, um, something filling, I suppose. We we'll do it. Now, you keep your chin up. Come on, Granny. Is she a girl? One of my girls, a model. Your favorite, huh? Yes, as a matter of fact, she is. What'd you have to eat today, honey? Oh, a glass of tomato juice and some watercress. Don't tell Madame Renee. I'm not supposed to eat so much. <laughs> Ed Clampett, you can tell that banker Drysdale that he made a sorry business deal for you when he bought this place. Oh, Granny. Jethro, I got some siphon for you. If a place takes in 80 cents a week, how long does it take to take in a half a million dollars? <laughs> I'll get a piece of chalk and go to Cypher on the sidewalk. Never mind, Jethro. Granny, we got to look on this as a chance to help people. Now, look at Ellie Mae here, just busting with hell. Think of that poor, scrawny little girl in there, all skin and bone. You're right, Jed. And she's her favorite. I hate to think what the other girls look like. Well, let's go out and get them a truckload of vittles. With 80 cents. We can afford to throw in some of our own. All the blessings have been showered on us. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Uncle Jed. Found a $20 parking ticket on our truck. See what I mean, Granny? Our cup is running over. Jethro, <laughs> we'll slip it in with the vittles for Miss Renee. Come on. <laughs> the street's parked full of cars again. They sure ain't trading at our store. Not just cinch. <laughs> Everybody grab some. We got a lot to tote in. Tommy, dear, I'm afraid you're putting on weight. You better cut down on those seconds of watercress. Yes, madame. Ed, she ain't never gonna believe we got all this for 80 cents. Well, we'll tell her we run into a special sale. <laughs> think we was going to run off with your 80 cents? Done some shopping with it. Run into a humdinger of a sale. I told you good times was on the way. Come on, young'uns, let's stow these vittles out back whilst Granny shows her the dry goods. No, no, wait, stop. Now, Renee, pride is all right, but it won't take the wrinkles out of your belly like taters and cabbage and side meat. But I can't let you do this. But, ma'am, I uh, think you're starving young'uns. <laughs> Oh, I think I'm going to faint. Here. Take a snort of this. It'll get your blood to going. Come on along, young'un, and uh, you and your sisters get to peeling and cooking them spuds. <laughs> 
First thing you know, you'll flesh out like Ellie here. I'll help you. What's your name? Tommy. Oh, uh, excuse me, young fella. I thought you was a girl. You look a lot like your sister was here before. <laughs> hey, Tommy, you better get out of those fancy pants. Folks is gonna think you're a sissy. <laughs> Beat that sour cider all holler, don't it? Drink up, honey. It'll make the world seem rosier right off. Frank, I'll see you in it. Excuse me. These worse off than we thought, Granny. They ain't even got a kitchen out there. And no bedrooms at all, I can see. Uncle Jed, Granny! Like it's too late to save this one. She's stiff as a board. <laughs> Come on, we gotta save the rest of them. Yes, you'll do it of anything, Ken. Fetch her in, Jethro. There's still color in her cheeks. <laughs> Golly, ma'am. I don't know how to tell you how sorry I am. Ah, oh, bonjour, Madame René. Comment allez-vous? Madame. Madame. By George, I think the old girl is stoned. Monsieur Drysdale. Mademoiselle, it will be that, madame. May no. My shop was invaded by some strange-looking creatures. Pink elephants? Purple dragons? No, they... they... Ah! There they are. But these are the Clampards. They're the new owners of your dress shop. And he's taking over right now. Every one of them girls back there is coming to our house to get fattened up. But I need them. I'm giving a fashion show at five. Now, you forget about it, Rainy. We'll mind the store and put on the show. <laughs> Mr. Clampett, may I have another snort? Uh, sip of that delicious vintage? Yes, ma'am. I'd go kind of easy, though. That stuff has got quite a jolt to it. Is it Mom's? No, ma'am. Granny. <laughs> Reenie and her girls is taking a rescue to get fattened up. But you was going to see the show that was promised to you. All right, Ellie Mae! Folks is a-waiting! Shake a leg out here! <laughs> George, he makes a beautiful model. That's it, honey. Struck real proud. I taught her that walk and gave her those turns. The turns might be yours, but those curves are her own. <laughs> One of Reenie's favorite dresses. What am I bid for this? Bid? It's Mr. Auction. All right, ladies, let's hear a bid. Twelve fifty. Twelve fifty? Are you out of your cotton picking mind? <laughs> Very well. Fifteen. Sold for fifteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. Now, ladies, it's her money. If she wants to throw it away, that's her business. <laughs> Next dress, Ellie. Looks like it was made out of a right nice piece of store-bought yard goods. What am I bid for this? 1850. Sold and don't give her any more rheumatiz medicine. <laughs>
Now, June will be with us before you know it. And I reckon there's more than one of you women that has a daughter that you're looking to get shed up. My <laughs> dingies, you put her in this when you bring her to that church, and you won't need no shotgun. <laughs> Ain't that something? The goods under there is slicker than a toad's belly. And that's first-class cheesecloth on top, too. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. What am I bid for this? I bid you hush up and give somebody else a chance. <laughs> Let's hear it. What am I being for this wedding dress? I'll pay any price if Jethro comes with it. <laughs> Sold to Miss Jane, and Jethro will come with it this evening. <laughs> Don't worry, Miss Jane. If he's got a date, I'll fetch it to you. <laughs> Show's over. <laughs> Through, we sold every dress in the store. Have you ciphered up how much that amounts to? Uh, yes, sir. It comes to pretty near fifty dollars. <laughs> that'll keep Reenie and her girls in riddles for months. Gives you a warm feeling to help folks in need, don't it? Yes, sir, Paul. Hey, Uncle Jed. Look, there's another parking ticket on our truck. Well, youngins, let that be a lesson to you. The more you give, the more you get. <laughs> This has been a Filmways presentation.